Good morning, morning. and welcome to worship. It's wonderful to see you all here today, and a welcome and good morning to those of you who are worshiping with us online. We are um, nearing the end of the season of Easter now, where our theme has been, Now the Green Blade Rises, as we spend time with the scriptures during this season reflecting on the new life that Jesus comes to bring. Uh, If uh, I'd like to call your attention to the connection cards in the pews in front of you, uh, if, we'd, if you're a member or a regular attender, we'd like you to just put in your name and email address and let us know you were here. And if you happen to be with us for the first time, we'd love for you to put in as much information as you're comfortable sharing. We'd love to be able to stay in touch with you later on during the week. Um, and for those of you who are worshiping with us online, if you want to get to know us a little better, you can go to our contact page at our website, rocklaverne.com contact. And there you can reach out with any questions or requests that you might have. Okay, a couple of announcements to make. One is, again, our summer day camp is coming up, and it is starting to fill up. So, um, but there are still spaces available for kids and families to be connected, so uh, feel free to make any invitations, invite your, your friends and neighbors to come and join us this year. Also coming up on June 11th will be our annual meeting, our congregational meeting. That will be after the second service, probably about 12.15 will be our starting time. And I, I'm also planning a Get to Know Rock class on June 10th. I have sign-up sheets in the entryway there. Um, if, uh, so if you know someone who's been thinking about joining or just wants to know more about Rock of the Foothills, you can send them in that direction or to me uh, to talk to me. Um, next week, I will be out of town, so you will be welcoming uh, with you uh, Pastor David Burkadal to preach for you and to preside at communion. Um, and also next week is our Memorial Day blood drive. So um, I, I've been saying there are, sign up, there are gonna be sign-up sheets, but apparently they're not out there yet. So, um, but you can sign up online. And uh, I believe you can go through our website to get to the sign-ups. So if you wanna sign up ahead of time, um, you can <laughs> pull out your phone and do it now or do it when you get home. So that's all that I have for announcements. We will continue with the call to worship. Please stand as you are able, and we will continue with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Our opening hymn is Here in This Place. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. and he 
defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite the children who are here to come down in front and join me, please. Hi there. Oh, come over here. All right. All right. Can you come over on this side of me so I can look in one direction? Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Yeah? Do you like video games? Yeah. What are, your, what are some of your favorite video games? Madden? Oh, Madden football? Okay. What about you? Do you like video games? Sorry? One more time. The Goose Game. I don't know that one. What do you do? Do you run around like a goose? Do you chase a goose? What do you do? Do you, do you raise geese? Like on a farm? That actually sounds kind of fun. Do you know any cheat codes for these games? Do you know what cheat codes are? Oh, oh, I get to reveal to you the wonderful world of cheat codes in video games. You know, one of the first ones that started back in 1986 for a really old gaming console called the Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo's first game system. You know, they have the little controllers, right, with the buttons that go up and down, the joysticks, the A, B, C, D buttons. Well, here's the thing. In one of those games, if you did it like this, you had the control and you pressed up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, you would, that's a cheat code that would enter you into a mode in the game where nothing could hurt you. <laughs> nothing at all. A lot of times they call it God mode because nobody can kill you, nobody can hurt you or anything like that. You can just plow through the whole game without any difficulty. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? No. <laughs> yes and no. That's a good point. You kind of, there's no challenge if, if, you, if you're in that mode. And we can do that with video games, but they're games, you know. They're not real life. Unfortunately, life isn't really like that. You can't, you can't pull out, I don't know, whatever, uh, your life game controller and go up, up, down, down, blah, 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 and never have any problems. We have problems in this life. And God actually allows us to go through them, well, Games that don't have any challenge aren't any fun, are they? No. 
we learn things through some of the difficulties that we, in, that we go through. And God walks with us even, even when we go through sad times. God walks with us in happy times and in sad times and wants to help us grow up into faith. Will you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, thank you for this life. And thank you always for being with us. And we pray that you remind us when we go through tough times, when we're sad or upset or hurt, remind us that you are with us and that you are helping us through it. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, thanks for coming up here. Good morning. Our first reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles in the first chapter, verses 6 through 14. Luke describes the ascension of Jesus, writing these words. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, <coughs> Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading is from the first letter of Peter, in chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, then chapter 5, 6 through 11. Peter writes these words. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John in the 17th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those who, whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. I've been thinking this past week about my first year at college. Well, to be more specific, my very first day at college, I guess. The day that my mom dropped me off. Classes hadn't started yet. It was just a matter of finding and settling into my dorm room. I started college at Cal State University in Long Beach, and I finished college at Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington, but that's another story. But I grew up in the Bay Area, and I was going to school in Long Beach. I'd packed up the car with all the stuff that I was taking to school, and my mom and I left Hayward and drove down here to Long Beach. We had some family friends who lived in Seal Beach, so we made our way there, and we spent a day or two with them, and then it came time for me to move into my dorm room. I was excited and nervous, as you might expect, 
We drove to campus. We found the building that I would be living in, Los Alamitos Hall, for some reason. I still remember the name of it. And we checked in. And someone led us up to the floor where my room was. And I tell you, these rooms were much different from some of the dorm rooms that I've seen in recent years. I mean, some of the dorms I, I've seen lately are like, they're like, luxury hotels compared to my first dorm. These, the, the floors were like the classrooms in my high school, that same industrial tile floor with cinder block walls and a metal desk and metal bed. It was all quite cold. My mom helped me haul my stuff up from the, scar, from the car. My roommate hadn't arrived yet, so I could choose which side of the room to start settling into. And eventually, my mom said it was time for her to leave. Just like that. At least that's how it felt to me at the time. Just like that, you're leaving? Well, of course, it had to happen sometime. She couldn't stay with me there forever, and still, I was shaken. She hugged me and kissed me and walked out the door. And from my dorm window, I watched her walk out of the building to the car, and I watched her drive away. And then I sat on my bed and cried. <laughs> what strikes me as I look back on that moment is how much it felt like an ending. Despite the fact that I had just arrived for my first year of college, I was just step stepping out on a new, exciting, deeply enlightening phase of my life that still didn't feel that way. All I could see in that moment was the part of my life that had just ended. Sitting there in that cold room, not even knowing what kind of roommate I was going to have. He ended up being a great guy, if you're concerned. But there I was, something new and better was in store. I just couldn't see it yet. Now, as I said, we've been spending this season of Easter thinking about new life and new creation. We've called it Now the Green Blade Rises, and we've been hearing the call of the risen Jesus to new life and new creation. And in our gospel lesson today, we come to a moment which is very much like my, that college experience of mine for the disciples. And in fact, we've been in a moment like this for, for two weeks, but it comes more to a point today. This is, again, we're still in that section I've been telling you is called the Farewell Discourse in John. And in particular, this chapter, chapter 17, is called the High Priestly Prayer. The entire chapter is Jesus praying for the disciples and for us. He turns his attention from talking to them to talking to God. And they all get to listen in. Jesus is comforting and preparing the disciples for what is coming. For one thing, he's preparing them for his crucifixion and resurrection, but even more, he's preparing them for his ascension. The time when he would leave and no longer walk this earth with them the way he had been for the th past three years. And I'm sure it felt like an ending for the disciples. I love how it plays out in the passage from Acts that you, just, that you just heard. In John, Jesus talks about leaving, but in Acts, he leaves. Jesus is lifted up and he disappeared in a cloud. Where did he go? That's not really the point. The point is, he's not here in the flesh anymore. So that happens and then the two messengers appear next to the disciples and say to, say to the disciples, why are you standing around like a bunch of tourists in Manhattan? <laughs> right? I've been to New York City once. I did, that's what I did. <laughs> Chicago too. Anyway, they said, why are you looking like that? Don't worry, he'll come back. You've got stuff to do, so get on with it. You see, Jesus' ascension, that's what we call this, his ascension is really a big deal, especially for these disciples who walked with him, shared meals with him, talked and shared life together with him. They only knew him in physical form. But that was coming to an end. And really, only knowing Jesus in physical form, as great as that would sound to us, 
it's not nearly enough for the mission and the word that God has for the world. You might say it's like a bird, bird kicking its young out of the nest or my mom leaving me in my dorm room and going home. And it is like that, but it's also not like that. Because when my mom left, she was gone. And last week we heard Jesus say, I will not leave you orphaned. Again, all those years ago in Long Beach, my mom had to leave. I needed her to leave in order to keep growing up. But you see, Jesus, Jesus can leave us physically and still be with us eternally. Jesus can leave us physically and still be with us eternally. You might have noticed Jesus talks about eternal life in this passage. And so often we tend to think of eternal life as simply the next life, life in the hereafter. I spend a lot of time talking to God about the hereafter these days. I walk into a room and I say, Lord, what am I here after? <laughs> you like that one? That's a good one, isn't it? But Jesus defines eternal life differently, doesn't he? He says, this is eternal life, that, you may, that they may know you, he's praying to God, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is eternal life, to know God and know Jesus. There's nothing about time or place in that definition, whether in earth or in heaven or the new earth or the new heaven, now or in the hereafter. It's about being in relationship with God revealed in Jesus Christ in relationship with God by the Holy Spirit, which makes that relationship possible now. Eternal life is here and now. An eternal kind of life. Last week I put it this way. The Holy Spirit is the presence of the God of love with us and within us. The presence of Jesus no matter where or when we are. Think about it this way. In his physical body, there was only one place at a time that Jesus could be, with only so many people at a time. He was limited by his physical body. By his spirit, Jesus, the love and grace of God, can be with us and within us anywhere and with all of our Christian sisters and brothers anywhere in the world. In China, in Australia, in the Ukraine, in Brazil, in Malawi, and all the other places you could name. So as I said before to the disciples, this probably all seemed like an ending to them. And in truth, it was. And at the same time, it is the beginning of so much more. Next week, we get a look at what that beginning was like. Amen. Will you please stand as you are able for the hymn of the day? Lord, speak to us that we may speak.
together with Christians around the world and throughout the ages, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will continue with the prayers of the church, and after a few brief prayers, I will um, give you a moment to offer up a moment of silence, to offer up your own prayers, either silently or aloud. And at that point, I'd like to invite those of you worshiping with us online to put your prayers in the comments section. Whether you're watching with us live or later on at another time, feel free to put your prayers into the comments. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit. Come to be the presence of Christ with us and within us. And we pray that you give us the grace that you pour out more of your spirit and make us aware of your presence. O oh God, the rock of our salvation, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for the leaders in our, our cities, our state, our county, our nation. We pray that you bring them into your wisdom as they seek to lead our nation. O oh God, the rock of our salvation, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all of the families who will be joining us for summer day camp. And for those who are on the fence, uh, wondering whether or not to come, Lord, we pray by your grace you would lead them to us and by your grace help us to share your love. O oh God, the rock of our salvation, hear our prayer. Now, Lord, hear these prayers that we lift up to you silently or aloud or in the comments section online. O God, the rock of our salvation, hear our prayer. Into, these, into your hands, dear Lord, we lift these prayers, sure and certain of your love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment to share that peace with one another. Please be seated, and I would like to invite Dee Dee Downs forward. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about the importance of giving to God and his people and as much as you are able and when you're able. Uh, we've all heard the saying, life is a journey, and when it comes to stewardship, uh, it has definitely been a journey for me. Um, I'd like to begin with two Bible verses that have really defined my faith's journey, especially recently. The first one is from the book of Luke, chapter 12. Then he told them the story. 
of the farm of a certain rich man who produced, who produced a terrific crop. He talked to himself, what can I do? My barn isn't big enough for this harvest. Then he said, here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll gather in my grains and goods and say to myself, self, you have done well. You've got it made and now you can retire. Take it easy and have the time of your life. Just then God showed up and said, fool, tonight you die and your barn is full of goods. Who will get them? That's what happens when you fill your barn with self and not with God. The second verse that I'm gonna uh, talk to you about is Psalm 34. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from my fears. And many of you already know that for many years I was weighed down in debt. With no hope of giving regularly, let alone tithing. I spent many years being angry, not having enough money to tithe and blaming everyone else but myself. I also spent too much time not answering calls. When the Holy Spirit was asking me to give back to the places that have done so much for me. I was blind to my problems and I was unwilling or unable to see clearly what was happening in my life. I do have good news. I have no more debt. But that is a story for another time much more involved in this one. Uh, everyone here has organizations that mean something to them. And if you're hesitating in giving, I say start here and God will guide you. A good place for me has always been the church especially this one. They have given so much to worthy organizations locally and nationally and internationally. Other organizations that might spark some ideas for you would be a hospital that saved a family member's life, a shelter that helps women get back up feet. Giving for me has been a very long journey, but looking back, it has been well worth it because I know that God has been by my side. It also helped me to remember that God already has everything he needs and giving to organizations including the church is for me it's for my peace it's for my happiness and i'd like to leave you with a verse from the book of judges go in the strength that you have whatever that is that's going to be enough for today. Ask God for strength. Ask him for a deeper relationship with you. Giving will become so much easier that way. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, Dee Dee.
uh, we will continue now with the offering. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels, archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. If you happen to be with us for the first time this morning, we want you to know that we celebrate an open communion table here at Rock of the Foothills. The invitation is from the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are welcome to come. The choir will come and commune for first, and then our usher will lead you forward by row. We do have wine and grape juice for communion. If you would prefer to have the grape juice, just simply let us know. Now, I'll also let you know, this week has been one of those weeks for me where I'm like, I'm sure this is allergies. No, I'm sure this is a cold. Back and forth all week long. So uh, with that, and today I'm pretty sure it's a cold. So I'm going to wear this mask while we commune. Um, and I did wash my hands as well as use the sanitizer. The table is prepared. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good.
Will you please stand as you are able? Will you pray with me, please? Lord God, we give you thanks for this gift of life and holy communion. And we pray that through it you would continue to lead us into new life and new creation by your Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is Thine the Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.